Oh my goodness, what a terrible start to the day. Hi folks, welcome back. It's the Big Barn Build. Today, we're making a start on the pool. Steve's here for a crash course, teaching me everything we need to know about ITF. <laughs> I hope so. And uh, as you can see, we've made a good old start. So stick around and we'll show you what we've been up to. All right, just had the exciting call to tell me that our ICF blocks are on the way. Uh, just need to work out where to bring them. We need to use forklift to get them off because I had to, I had to book the pallet because uh, unfortunately Steve, who's our supplier, went to pick them up and they wouldn't fit in this van. Like hung out this time and they were in Essex, so there's no way I was going to pick them up. Let's see if the old boy starts. <laughs> all in one piece. So the only thing that is missing is the corner sections, the right angled corners, which Steve's gonna bring because they would fit in the van. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a downpour yesterday, and I haven't looked in this hole in the ground yet, but I'm not. Oh dear. I mean, it's half six, so I've got a bit of time. Rain like I've never seen it before yesterday, and this is what we've been left with. Uh, obviously, we haven't got the guttering yet, and the downpipe, or, or basically the water was falling onto that footing, going to the end, ending up on that outside slab. And then because we've got our access door, pouring back through this way. And that's what we're ending up with. Oh my goodness, what a terrible start to the day. I've already had to change my clothes, absolutely soaked. All right, so things that I need to do. This is all right, acceptable. We are gonna to need to take off these. Remember these bars around the outside, they were temporarily there just to hold our sensors. The only thing is, it'll mean that everything goes floppy, but we can't slide the blocks down until they're off, so it's gotta be done. Okay, we're all set and uh, everything is on site ready, so everything's arrived, even the newest team member, <laughs> who's gonna be napping on site. Oh, here he is. <laughs> the newest member arriving three weeks early, which was very unusual for any of our uh, children. It's unusual for anything, in actual fact. <laughs> in our it's, lives. It is like the only project we've ever done that's come in the head of schedule, really. So yeah. there we go. Uh, Tim the... didn't quite believe it, did you? And you? No, and we don't really know what we're doing. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. he's, um, he's what was it? five, week, five weeks we've had, so it's... Uh, besotted. They are. And, and the rumours were starting great. in the last video, so we thought we'd better um, introduce him properly. So this yeah. is a little Rupert. Rue. And um, due down to like the beauty of Wi-Fi baby cams, we can safely get Joe back on site now. We're all no here. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. And this is a good one. This is a good warm up. No heavy lifting, really. Just some like Lego. Yeah, and yeah. Grown it's up good. Lego, isn't it? It's good. We did a bit of a crash course with uh, Steve coming to help us kind of train us up on some of the basics. But apart from that, um, we'll do a follow up video on how much it costs, all the kit and also a little bit more info on this area of the build in a future video, but enjoy. Look, look, look at that. Oh, granny, if you can, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the corners are unfolded because obviously as we as we saw they're on a on uh, yeah, yeah of course so when we unfold them two of these 
are taped to here. So the, yeah. just, these are the only ones that need to be assembled. So this one is a thicker one and a narrow one. So the, the narrow one goes in here. So that's a regular 200. Regular 200, what we call a web. Yeah. Always make sure it's gone all the way down. And then this one adds extra strength to the corner. And again, that goes all the way down through the yeah. receptacles. Now that's now a rigid, fully formed block. I'm with you. Now, it, it use, you can use it either way around, a right or a left. You don't need a right corner or a left corner. It reverses and it flips upside down and works the same upside down. Oh, so these aren't a male and female on the bottom? No, they're not. No, nope, the they same. work both ways. Are you calling time on it now, Tim, or is that... Uh... Uh, well, it's a big house to fill, isn't it? But... <laughs> it's a big house, but... <laughs> and you've not quite got to the six-a-side team yet, have you? No, no. Because that one's already in place... Yeah. Let's put this one alongside it and see how many we're going to snag on. Oh, it's if, if, if any. OK, so without actually putting it in place, just straighten that up and let, just run our eye along there. That one's looking close, but it, that way it could be OK, couldn't yeah. it? about 10 people to see. Do you know, honestly, sometimes it does help someone looking underneath and moving yeah. them. Yeah, well, I'll... Well, let's see where that takes us, shall we? Yeah, yeah. So you see here, behind and back, and then down here, and that should... Obviously, it's not quite level, but once we've got that in place properly, that will clip down. Uh, okay, so it's sitting in that. Behind there. there, yes, it's sitting behind there. This isn't quite level, but it's, it's a little. What bit do you mean, not level? I said not quite. It's about <laughs> a millimetre out here. And you don't get any spillage or, or leakage. Yeah. So if we put that there, just like that, we know that that's butted up against here. Yeah. And then we'll see, uh, we'll put this one in place as well. So we've done it to. Do you see these lines on here? Yes. Those are cut lines. Okay. So we've we've figured it out to a cut line so that you haven't got any waste. In these what we call webs, these black connectors. Yeah. That now is a is a rigid corner. Yeah. And then you pull that one up. Where are we? If you can take that right over to that corner. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've got a double on that end. Are we back there or? Oh, we might have to move it again in a minute. I just want to see where that takes us, really. They look either. That should be absolutely fine, then, yeah. shouldn't it? So now we're going to lay this one along it and see where it, which line we hit. Yeah. So we know that one's right. We've got a little bit of wiggle space both ways. Okay. So if you just take that one along, please, Tim, and see where... Just to the end of that block. Here. Yeah. Like we're cutting down this line here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good, because these three lines represent... 50 mil increments. Yeah. If we cut down the middle line, these always line up when we put one on top of the other. If we cut down a line either side of the middle one, these will always go into each other. However, if we cut between there, when we put one on top of another one, they're going to be hitting each other like this. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's always good if we can hit a cut line, and yeah. that's how we've determined the, the final size, I believe. And then the corresponding one, the middle one of these, which is here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, beats cutting blocks. That's a nice Concrete straight block. line. Yeah, a bit easier, isn't it? <laughs> so now we can put all these in place. And because we've cut down the middle line, that one will clip. Of course, yeah. If it was the next line, it wouldn't clip. The clips wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't be either be too long or too short. Yeah. Isn't it really? 
My West Country. So yeah. heavy, it's going to need us all. So. Well, no, it was more exactly there, that. working out which. Happy there? Yeah. Fair enough, sir. I think we're good. Yeah, are you hitting one somewhere? Don't know oh, what. Oh, that was That's what happens. Look, it was all right earlier. I don't know why you asked me to help. You need to go even further. It's like one of the top ones. There we go. All right. Right, okay. That's good. Oh, we've got the next one. That's a lucky one. It ain't made to fit. Sorry, uh, skillful on your part. Now this one, we will use on the next course. Yeah. Yeah, the other end door. Yeah. So, yeah. Because when we reverse the corners, because to get the brick pattern, yeah, that will then go in the gap that we've created. And are we corners. aiming the, for the bond to be bang in the middle, or does it just have to be it set off? It will be by working in from the corners. You'll, yeah. you'll see where it will it'll okay. naturally occur anyway. Yeah. Uh, One's probably taped to the next. Yeah, they are. Look. So we just take this tape off here, like this. And go. Will do. Thanks ever so much, JC. Well, there we go, as you saw. We've made a good start. Steve's heading off. Um, but we are no, four hours in, and we managed to get the bottom course done, which is the most awkward one, especially when your concrete slab is like the Himalayas. And then get the horizontal rebar in, and now we're flying, because really I should be able to manage myself now, or at least just uh, another helper. So uh, the aim is to get two courses. The, the total coursing is going to be three and a half, um, but we're going to get two courses in, and then after that we can square things up so it's heavy enough to hold itself, but light enough that we can shift and shunt things around. Anyway, it's quite fun and addictive to do, and I'm just going to get on with it, even though we were going to let the kids get involved. But there's still plenty of opportunity to do that, and the main thing they can do is put the units together, putting them on, is way up high, so I'll leave that for me.
Well, that is what I call a productive day. We're well, not done yet, but it's half four. And the only reason I haven't kind of ploughed on with this end is because I need to get out. I've got a ladder in now, so I think I could do maybe two more full length and a corner, which will basically finish off this three courses. Now, the plan is to go a half a block higher, but until I know exactly where our finished floor slab is going to be, whether that's a suspended slab or a block and beam, uh, I'm going to hold off on that. This is enough for us to kind of get on with other stuff around the barn. Um, also, we're going to have to brace all this, and that's going to take some time, because at the moment, because of my dippy floor, we're not really in contact with the ground in lots of places. In fact, we're not in contact in that many places. So we've taken off a little bit where we can on the outside, but we can't do too much more of that. So the plan is to foam a little bit where we need to if there's a small gap. But what I'm thinking is I'll get a perimeter timber fixed down into the slab all the way around the outside. And that will hold, one, it will hold the ICF where we want it. So we've got nice straight lines and we can make sure it's all completely square. We were going to square it all up after two courses, but it needs two of us here really. And I'm impatient and I figured actually it's still movable with three courses. So we'll get some timbers fixed down to the floor and what that'll do is that almost act like shuttering. So it'll close that gap off and then when the concrete's poured on the inside, it'll come down. We can take those off afterwards and we'll end up, you know, it, some of the ISF will be on like a little tapered plinth, which is absolutely fine. And then what we'll do as well, once that timber's down, then we need to get a timber fixed into these fixing points, which are every 200, and then build the A-frames to support this. That's the plan. But for now, I'm just going to keep playing with my Lego. Well, there goes day one of ICF school for us, and it was pretty straightforward. Quite liked it, actually. I'm not sure I'd have the energy to do a whole house constantly. You'd kind of want to break it up with other jobs, um, but certainly lends itself to all sorts of applications. Timber's got to go down, bracing's got to go up ahead of any pour, but obviously before that can happen, there's a whole load of first fix for the actual plumbing and pool and all that uh, filter and everything else that needs to go on. Um, and we've got someone involved to help with that. So that's going to progress in the background, but we just need to finish this th third course and then I will look at getting the height correct so I can get the half course on so that our slab can sit on it afterwards. But I'm just about done. I'm ready for the weekend. I need a cup of tea and it's my birthday tomorrow. But I'm going to leave it there. Thanks to Steve for coming and giving us a bit of a crash course. Uh, Steve works for a company called ICF supplies which is where we bought all this kit from and he wasn't too far from us and he said he'll uh, pop over and kind of start us off and once you know those few techniques apart from windows and doors there's a bit more work around there you know you could build anything with this stuff so it's all good fun if you want to see how this turns out uh, or certainly in the next few stages then make sure you subscribe and follow along this will probably need to happen in the next month or so so then we can get the wall up because the external wall of the house is around the pool I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. Oh, if you can, do it yourself. <laughs>